You want to build a base in Clash of Clans but have no idea where to start? In this video I will guide you through the whole process of building a base from scratch and will take you through each step as well as my thinking process. Let's start right off, but first you always have to think what is the type of base I am going to build. For me, it will now be an anti-2 star base. Someone requested on the last video the, if we could make a guide on how to build a ring base. I would say an anti two star base is roughly a little ring base. Ring bases are not that good in the current meta because they are very vulnerable to root riders. The anti two star base is surely the best base right now in the meta. And I want to start off with a rage tower setup. Do we have the rage tower two tiles away from the town hall, so the town hall is still within the rage tower, and we can get maximum value out of it. Of course, we can also place it like here directly next to the town hall, as well as one tile away from the town hall. But if you place the two tiles away from the town hall, you have more spaces to place other buildings inside the rage tower setup. And of course, if you place it three tiles away from your town hall, then it won't be inside of the rage tower radius. With these rage towers, you want to actually maximize how many buildings you can put in there without offering too much zap value. So we place one Inferno Tower. I love placing Inferno Towers in there. Placing a monolith into a Rage Tower setup is not too strong. You always want to have like splash defense building. So scatter shots are great. Uh, multi Archer Towers are great. Ricochet Cannons are great. Expos can also be very strong for single target damage. But splash damage is mostly what you want in there. And now we have to watch out because well... If we now place any more buildings in there, we can instantly offer some zap value. So for example, if I now place a multi archer tower in there, this would be great zap value, absolutely amazing zap value. Therefore, we have to watch out with that and cannot necessarily offer that. So therefore, I will actually put in some ricochet cannons right there. And we can also move it maybe a little bit towards here, exactly. And now the good thing is, we cannot zap the Inferno Tower together with the Ricochet Cannon. And we do that ex on the exact other side as well. Wait, there we have it. Once again, we cannot zap them together. We still have two good spots left. If we now place some scatter shots in there. Great zap value, scatter shot together with multi inferno tower together with the rage tower, amazing zap value to, as well as if you were to place a multi archer tower there. So the only real option here is to put some expos. Of course, the zap value is still good with like one expo, one multi inferno tower as well as the rage tower, but it's not too good. So this would now be our rage tower setup, and now we have to separate it into different compartments so you can't take it out that easily if you want any guides for lower to of course this is now a tunnel 16 guide or like it's still you can still learn something from it if you're an, a beginner an intermediate or an expert and if you're for example tunnel 10 11 12 you will still learn something from this uh, from this guide but if you want a guide for lower tunnel levels for example tunnel 12 just let us know down in those comments just write which tunnel level you are and which tunnel level you want a guide from and maybe we will do it in a future video. But now let's continue the build. Of course, they want to separate it into different compartments. And I would love to have the town hall within a separate compartment. So we place a little wall here. So from the Inferno Tower, the Archer Queen can now not reach the town hall. From the other side, we of course also want the town hall a little protected. I will actually do it five walls right here. Just so Super Archers also can reach it and that's the exact same thing we're also going to do on these sides we want to protect it from super archer blimps of course if you land within this compartment so for example this is now my blimp and we land right here we still get a ton of value and probably we won't be able to stop it but still if you place some black mines maybe here and the blimp opens up behind the wall they can't reach over the wall to get the town hall. That's exactly what we want. The only way where they could reach the town hall is from the multi inferno tower. So we have to make it hard for a super archer blimp to land there. Now we also make a different compartment for the multi inferno tower. It's perfect. From here, 
the Archer Queen cannot reach the Multi Inferno Tower. And also, from here, she also can't. But I'll make it one more compartment. I will make it one compartment larger. Just so we can limit some Electro Dragon chains. If we now put like uh, some storages in there, then we could make it that those chains for Electro Dragons are like a little, little worse. And that's exactly what we want. That's good. That's very, very good. Wait, and now see, it's not kind, it's not really symmetrical. I made a little mistake right here, so we will fix that. Now it's symmetrical, now it looks way better. And now also the storages, we can change it up a little bit. This looks better. Also, if we were to place a, a building right here, for example, a air defense, then also e can't chain the air defense over the elixir storage, which is great. It's very, very great. So we make another compartment right here. It's like a 10, 10 times 10 compartment. I like doing it by just placing a building and then taking a look. Okay, five tiles to this side and now also five tiles to this side. And we have a perfect 10 times 10 compartment where we can place any building and it won't be chainable. If an Electro Dragon is, for example, now on the mortar, the chain can, uh, cannot go anywhere as well as on this mortar, as well as on this mortar. But of course, we want to delete that. We will take a look what exact uh, buildings we will place there a little bit later. We do the exact same thing on the opposite side because, well, the base we want to have it symmetrical. So we place some buildings right here. And now we can enclose the compartment. We have a perfect 10 times 10 compartment and we delete everything again. Okay, how do we want to continue? Probably we will start off with like the scatter shots right now. Or we do the eagle setup. Of course, we have here. We we have to place like the eagle compartment roughly right here because, well, if we place it here, then the base won't be symmetrical again. And if you place it here as well, then the base again won't be symmetrical and it just it just doesn't look right and it also isn't right. So the eagle will roughly be here. Maybe a little bit more outwards. We will have to take a look at that very, very soon. But let's start off with scatter shots first. So we place like the scatter shot five tiles away. Hello, am I allowed to place it? Thank you very much. Five tiles away from that side. And can we now also... Yes, this looks perfect. And also now five tiles away from this side. So we can place more buildings inside of this compartment and chain value for Electro Dragons won't be there. Chain value is something you will always have to watch out for. Now let's just enclose the compartment and maybe put a little building list zone right here. So the scatter shot isn't reachable from the outside. Now we do the exact same on the other side. Right here. Do the exact same thing. Make another building list zone, but now we have a problem, and that is space. On this side, of course, we can still place buildings here, but on the other side, that won't be possible. So we have to place it more inwards. Do the exact same thing. And now here as well, we place the scatter shot more inwards. We get rid of this wall. And then we have some nice places to build some more uh, while well, to make a good trash ring let's now make it symmetrical as well on that side we have yes it's we have to move it one tile towards here and now it should be symmetrical right yes it is perfect now it looks symmetrical of course now we have the problem that from this compartment you can also reach the scatter shot but I think it's better than to not have a trash ring outside. I think this is okay so far. I think this looks quite alright. We have no zap value within the race tower. The scatter shot setup looks kind of good. And now let's continue with the eagle compartment. I have no idea what my iPad currently is doing. But my iPad is not doing what I want from it. If we now place it here, that would be like a little too much overgrowth value. Overgrowth value is of course also something you have to watch out for. So we can't really put any more key defenses 
inside hello scattershot please move thank you inside here so we've placed like a multi inferno tower right here of course that doesn't look right it's also reachable but it also would offer some great overgrowth value of course you can now overgrowth the spell tower town all together with the scattershot as well as the expo that's a great overgrowth value but we will take a look at that later and take care of that later now exact same thing with the eagle compartment we want to have five files here so we can place like a building here and we have no chain value and we will do that on each and every side so now we have a beautiful enclosed eagle compartment but we still need to place a monolith somewhere just like i said we can't really place it inside of the core because the overgrowth value is just too good so the only real option is to like have the monolith be here and if we now place some walls behind there then we have the problem that we cannot place any buildings right here we could only place like builder huts but of course you want to build a hut inside of the base and not on the outside so what if we like place the monolith one more inwards and then have like some walls right here so the monolith isn't reachable and we can place some buildings right here this looks way better it looks way 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 better now we can maybe also make some 10 times 10 compartments right here we'll place some buildings and we enclose the compartment perfect that fits so well that looks very very good so far some more buildings right here and another enclosed compartment now we still have one problem that is we have two inferno towers but where to put it <laughs> we have two impor inferno towers but what for and of course we still have uh, we still need to place one spell tower um if i put it here with like a poison tower that would be too much zap value as well as if we place it here but we could place a poison tower right here and it will cover like this side of the base as well as make it harder for a super archer blimp to land inside of the core compartment this looks okay so far this looks more than okay so far this looks very good actually but we still need to place our inferno towers inside of the core it's not a possibility well it could be if we like place some inferno towers right here and then maybe place like a death zone. No, we cannot. We cannot. Inferno Tower will always be reachable. But the question is, is that how big of a problem is that? It looks okay-ish. But also the zap value could be good. Zap value on like Scattershot, Ricochet, can as well as the multi Inferno Tower. It looks solid. Looks more than solid. But what if we like place the Inferno Tower right here? And then have another death zone. Can we play... No, we could not. We could not place... Or we have to move everything inwards. If we like put uh, place everything inwards... Then... We would also have to get rid of the, the, the compartment down here. But now we could have a buildingless zone right here. To just mess up pathing. And now we could still place some buildings on the outside. I think that's quite an okay way of putting the inferno towers i think this is okay this looks good it looks good to have the inferno towers right here so do the exact same thing on the opposite side get rid of this compartment hello thank you no that's not now it works perfect for some reason my touch screen is just not doing what it's supposed to do i re i desperately need a new ipad but it's so expensive new ipads are so incredibly expensive um okay are they on the right side? No. They have to be right there. Hello. Can I please thank you? And another buildingless zone. And now it's perfectly symmetrical again. How many? We have 27 walls left. We probably can't make two 10 times 10 compartments right here, right? So we make a 10 times 10 compartment. Does this work out? No, we now have 10 walls left. Uh this doesn't work. This doesn't work out. 
But what if we now make it like a shorter compartment? We make it like a 10 times 5 compartment. So instead of having four bases in there, we could maybe have two bases. Hello, touchscreen. Hello, iPad. Can you please do what I want from you? You're making my life incredibly hard. Hello, you are... What's happening? What is happening? I cannot place my cannon where I want it. Thank you. Thank you. Is it that hard? Is it that hard? Thank you. Yep. It seems to be that hard. Does anybody know like a fix on why my iPad screen is just not reacting? And like not doing what it's supposed to do? I really, really want to know why that's the case. But what if we have it like this? This looks quite alright to be honest. This looks more than alright. If we now do the exact same thing on the other side. One building right here, another building right here. And close it. Now we have three walls left. Or we could save like a little walls. Maybe we could like change up this compartment a little bit. We can put one wall here. To, so we have like two diagonal. We have like two diagonal walls from uh, from the monolith. Two diagonals always what you need. Wait, let me like make a little example with the expo. Expo. We have two diagonal walls. Then one outwards. And here we can make it so that a Archer Queen cannot necessarily reach the expo. Now the expo would be unwalkable. And we can check that a little bit by, for example, using a skeleton spell. This is a really cool trick which you can always use. If you're unsure if the Archer Queen can reach a building, just use a skeleton trap and take a look. Can't reach it from there, since the skeleton trap has the exact same range as the Archer Queen. Also can't reach it from there. From here it can't reach it. From here it also can't reach it, as well as from here. But now, if we were to mess it up a little bit and place this one bit inwards now we can see that a tiny 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 bit of the expo is is within the range of the skeleton trap so the arctic queen could actually reach it same would be if we place this one one inwards but now it gets a little bit more obvious now it gets way more obvious as well as for example if we only have one diagonal tile then the Arctic Queen can, of course, easily reach it. So that's the exact same thing we're going to do with the monolith. We have two diagonal tiles. We go one up here, we go one up here. Then we move one inwards, we go one up. And now we have it unwalkable. And we have to do the exact same thing on the other side. Let me delete some walls so I can see it better. We have... Wait, let me get the wall. Zero diagonal, one diagonal, two diagonal. And close the wall. Move one upwards, one inwards, as well as one upwards. And here we also move one upwards. Now we have eight walls left. We got ourselves like seven walls right there, no? We had three before, we got ourselves five walls. Five walls is good. Now what are we going to do with eight walls? We could like make... Another compartment right here. So we can make this a little bit better. This, to be honest, looks quite alright. Now from this compartment, we also can't reach the ricochet cannon. From this side as well. And now from this compartment, where the wizard tower is now is, we cannot reach the eagle artillery. Still need to place the tower, the clan castle. Clan castle, of course, you want to have it inside the core of the base. So we just easily place it right there. And we have the clan castle. Now the big question is, how do we continue? Where do we put our sweepers? Sweepers are, of course, probably... Even though many people underestimate how strong sweepers are sweepers... Of course, since Tunnel, I believe Tunnel 11, they haven't gotten a single more level because if you give them another level, they will just be completely broken. Sweepers are very, very important against air attacks. So we just place them pointing towards the right side as well as towards the top side. I think that's the best thing, right? Yeah, we don't necessarily need them to protect the Eagle Artillery. 
And now we can also bait that any dragon attack will most likely come from the Eagle Artillery side. We have the Eagle Artillery here, as well as the Clan Castle. Those are the two main targets for any air attack. So we can already be sure that an air attacker is now going in from the Eagle Artillery side. Maybe have like the Tornado Trap somewhere here to catch a blimp for the Town Hall. But that's something we'll take a look at once the base is finished. Let's now also place some Builder Huts within the core. One right here to protect everything or we could move it a little bit upwards. Yes, this looks way better. If we would have it here, then the multi Inferno Tower is not in there. If we put the Builder Hut here, now of course the multi Inferno Tower is also within the range. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Maybe we can put like even more Builder Huts in there. And we also cover the exact same thing. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So now we have like good, good Builder Hut value. The tunnel is protected by four Builder Huts. That's amazing. And all of the important defenses are, of course, also protected by two. So the Ricochet Cannon as well as the... The Eagle Artillery is protected by two Builder Huts. Both Ricochet Cannons are protected by two Builder Huts. The Scatter Shots are protected by two Builder Huts as well as the Inferno Tower. Now, of course, still have one Builder Hut and I have no idea where to go with it. Maybe it could be like a little funny and put it on the outside. So I'll like put it in front of here and then we can make it a like very annoying to funnel inside of the eagle uh, eagle artillery compartment that could be an idea to be honest it could be a great idea just to hurt funneling a little bit we can now place some storages right here those storages will be protected by a builder hut as well as the monolith is of course now protected by a builder hut and we could place maybe some teslas right there to make funneling incredibly annoying but it's something we'll take a look at a little bit later next thing of course we still have a few key defenses where do we put it we have two ground expos right here covering everything so we could maybe place ground expos here as well then it won't be walkable from the outside no the problem is however pathing towards the inferno tower and scattershot compartment if we now were to send in some root biters from, for example, this side, they could go from building to building and then go into the into that compartment. So I would love to like not have any building there. Like any building that's going to be a defensive building. So maybe we put like the queen there and then a storage in front. And now if we put like another defense right here, the root weather scout would go defense to defense to defense and they will completely dodge the scatter shot as well as the multi inferno tower. I think it looks quite alright. That looks quite good to be to be honest. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We place the other expo here. We place an air hero right here as well as one storage. Now popping on the other side as well. If they go from building to building and then they would go to the expo, open up this wall and everything will just dodge this compartment, which is great. That would be like, that's one of the few tricks you can actually do against root fighters is make some, uh, some places where root fighters just will not go into compartments. For example, if you place like a few defenses right here. It is also very, very hard to get into the Inferno Tower compartment from this side. For example, it would be a great setup to put your king and queen on the 6 o'clock setup, then put like your barracks in here, and then send in root fighters to the multi Inferno Tower straight into the base. So we have to make that a little harder. We have to make it that you can't really go into the multi inferno tower compartment but i think that is possible that should be possible now we of course need to place our air defenses and we have to really watch out when it comes to um, a giant arrow value when placing your air defenses you of course really really have to watch out for giant arrows 
What if we place one air defense right there? We can we can like maybe offset him a little bit. So we place it one right here. This is now probably the moment where you make the base a little bit asymmetrical. Of course, the whole base is symmetrical, but you can place like a little buildings not symmetrical, so it's just a little more annoying to attack. For example, we place the air defense right here, and then instead of placing another air defense right here, we place the air defense in a different part of the compartment and now of course it's not symmetrical and it would be way way harder to get both of these air defenses with one giant arrow and i think now we also we have one on three o'clock we have one air defense on 12 o'clock now we need one on six o'clock as well as on nine o'clock so we just have each part of the base covered by an air defense now we just have to watch out with a giant arrow from here for both air defenses but i don't but i think it's okay i think it's okay what's may more dangerous is an air defense from 12 o'clock for the air defense as well as the sweeper that would be way way more dangerous because sweepers are most likely the first target if you're going to use a giant arrow and defending a giant arrow can be really annoying at some times and now we still have two more key defenses, which is of course the multi archer tower. If you place it right here, we have way too much skeleton spell value. But I think it'll be quite alright if you place it like somewhere over here. Okay, no, this doesn't look good. Now it's reachable from, it's not reachable from like here where the builder hut is currently, but it's reachable from here. And of course it's also reachable from the core. What if we place it like here? Now it's not reachable anymore, right? Or maybe... No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. If we now use a skeleton spell, it should not be reachable. Is that small corner in there? It could be. But we can take a look. If it's like... It should be like two diagonal. If we have zero diagonal, one diagonal, two diagonal. And then we go one up. One inverse and one up. Okay, so it would be reachable. The multi archer tower is indeed reachable from the outside. So we need so, so we have to place like another wall inside of this corner to not make it reachable. Where can we get another? Where could we get another wall? We need two wall pieces. Two wall pieces in total, then we're good to go. What if we like it? close this compartment a little bit more and now we would have two walls of course yeah i think it's good to go i think this is a good a uh, good thing we place one wall right there and another one wall right there so we place the multi archer towers and they are now both not reachable i think two more storage right here one storage right here and another storage on this side so now you cannot also easily enter the um, the multi infernal tower compartment if we were to place another building right here then the pathing could be like a little bit easier you can send in some root riders from the wizard tower and then it would straight go to the mortar and that's of course not what we want we want to make it hard for root riders to go in the compartment where they need to go so this is so far looking great our defense setup is okay we just need to weigh watch out for for some giant arrow value and of course the pathing into the inferno tower also looks very solid looks very very solid now we have to do the exact same thing with the monolith we have to watch out how our troops going to enter the monolith so we have to maybe play some defenses right here so all root brothers go outside of the monolith from the builder hut and we also need to place like two storages right here to make it that root riders won't easily go into the monolith compartment. However, what I don't like is we have no good spot for the king. We still need to place our king. What if we like place the king on the outside right here and then have a Tesla farm in front there to protect our king? And also some few Tesla to make it so you can't easily funnel inside the monolith compartment. I think it will be quite good. Then on the other side we can of course 
place maybe the dark elixir storage and once again we have two buildings that are not defenses that will make it so you cannot really funnel into the monolith compartments now of course we still need to have a few defenses here maybe we do something like this of course we still need two storages one storage two storages and another cannon right here and now it will be a little harder to funnel inside there or we make it be RC Towers. We could also make it RC Towers. I think RC Towers will be better. So we can use our cannons somewhere else. This looks quite alright. This looks more than alright. And now we can place some mortars right here. To also have a little more defenses. Which are going to lure your root riders outside. And make it so that nothing goes into the monolith compartment. Of course, we still need one more building here. Wizard Towers are perfectly suited for that. This looks good so far. This looks very, very solid. Now, what are we going to do with the 12 o'clock compartment? I think Builder Huts will be great here. I need me not Builder Huts Bomb Towers, just to protect a little bit more against skeleton value. If you were to enter with Root Fighters, then if I, for example, put a Archer Tower here, this skeleton spell could be great. Putting a skeleton spell down here will, of course, tank for the expo. It will distract the multi art tower as well as the ricochet cannon. So we don't want that. So we put a bomb tower right here just to protect a little bit more against skeleton spells. What would be like the main spot where you can put skeleton spells? Of course, monolith compartment is like a great place to play skeleton spells. But I think that's okay. I think that's not the end of the world. For example, also if we have a Tesla farm right here, it your value will be very, very limited, very limited. And of course, in all of the multi inferno towers, you can't really play skeleton spells right there because they will just instantly go down. They will instantly go down, so that's perfect. Now we can maybe place some more Archer Towers right here. So we have it a little bit more protected against like for example minions as well as other stuff but if you place the archer tower right here and then have mortars on each of these corners just to protect a little bit better against flame flingers of course flame flinger value on this base it looks quite good it looks very very good especially on like the multi inferno towers but on professional play flame flingers are not really that big of a deal because Time is a, is a deciding factor within most matches, so therefore, Flame Flingers, you don't really have to keep an eye out for that. However, what I currently don't like is I have no good spot to put the Warden. I need to have the Warden somewhere inside of the base. Placing the Warden as an outside building, that's just a complete waste, like a complete waste. So we cannot really do that, unfortunately. But what if we like get rid of one of the Archer Towers and place a Warden there instead? Looks better. Looks way better. Or no, wait, I have a great idea. What if we put the Warden right here? Just to also protect both of the buildings. I mean both of the heroes. Now we have the both of the heroes inside the radius of the, of the Grand Warden. So they get a little bit more health. I think that's the right call. This is for sure the right call. This looks great. This looks amazing. Let's place some wizard towers in front right here. Just to protect our air defenses from incoming rocket loons. Now you can't directly target the air defenses with any rocket loons. And we place it one inside. Not directly on the outside, but we place it one inwards. So we can like put some spring traps in there just to mess up funneling a little bit. Now we place two trash buildings right here to make funneling a little harder. For that I choose anything that is not able to go down with a sneaky goblin. If we were to put for example some gold mines right here. Then we can easily take those out with sneaky goblins. So instead I place two buildings that, are, that cannot be taken out with sneaky goblins. Just to make funneling a little bit harder. Or you would have to use uh, what's it called? Super Barons for that, and that's exactly what I want with the Spring Trap. If they use Super Barons and go into the Spring Trap, that would be amazing. That would be great. Do the exact same thing on the other side. 
Uh, what do we have left? We still have two wizard towers as well as three cannons. Let's place another cannon on this side just to also one inwards. No, that would be two inwards. Can we make it that it's only one inwards? Maybe we could, maybe we could. Oh, wait, I now see something. I see something. What if we change up this compartment a little bit and move it one outwards? So we can limit some more chain value from the... What's it called? From the Electro Dragons. I think this is a good call because, well... You can now see if you have like chains on the expo, they can basically go nowhere. At least they can't go to the air defense as well as to the bomb tower and also vice versa. I think this is a good call. And also then the multi RC tower won't be reachable. So I think it's the right call to make this compartment a little bit wider. This looks good. Yes, this looks amazing. This looks way, way better. And it also looks a little cleaner. And now we can place our cannon right here. One inwards. So we can mess up funneling. We place one more building right here. Which you cannot take out with any sneaky goblins. We did the exact same thing on the opposite side. Together with like one of the cannons. And we can place some spring traps in front of that cannon as well. To just mess up a little bit with funneling. And now we can continue placing our trash buildings. For this side, I, I don't really care if you can take it out with sneaky goblins or not. That's not necessarily what you're going to funnel out. You'll probably funnel out the cannon if we place some spring traps in, in front of those cannons. Then funneling gets significantly harder into the 12 o'clock compartment as well as into the Inferno Tower compartment. It gets like significantly harder. Which is great. This looks amazing so far. Now we are almost done with the base. We still have a few... Uh, what's it called? A few wizard towers. As well as one single cannon. And we still have two air defenses. Which are, well, at least one air defense. Which is not necessarily protected against rocket loons. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We place it right here. And another wizard tower right there. Just to protect like a little bit against rocket uh, rocket balloons. And we could maybe place our cannon there as well. Hmm. Let's do it a little bit like this. We have a little bit like this. This looks quite okay. Yeah, this does look okay. We have like this air defense a little bit more protected against loons. And we have both wizard towers on the outside just to mess up funneling a little bit as well as pathing. This looks okay. It looks okay -ish. But I would love to for the wizard tower to just be like somewhere over here. Just so pathing into the multi-inferno tower compartment will be a little harder. If we like place it right here. Then maybe root waters can open up this wall. So Valkyries as well as your King Queen can enter the multi inferno Tower compartment. That's not what I want. I want it to be enclosed. So if you now were to just drop some root waters right here. On the uh, Bob's Hut for example. On the Builder Hut. They will split. Go towards here. And go towards the Wizard Tower. Towards both Wizard Towers. From this Wizard Tower they will go to the Cannon. And then into the Air Defense compartment. And from here, they also go directly into the Arthur Tower compartment, not opening up any of these walls, which is amazing. That would be great. If it works out how I think it is in, in theory, then it would be amazing. Now we place some more trash buildings right here. And now we still have a lot of trash buildings we have to place with not many spaces left. With absolutely not many spaces left. How are we going to do this? Um, of course, we can just start by putting some gold mines right here. And on the other side as well. One gold mine right here. Also, watch out with like Electro Dragon chain value. It's two tiles between the gold mine and the mortar. And also between this gold mine and the mortar. 
But now the problem is we have some boulder bounces. If we now put some elixir, for example, an elixir uh, collector right there, we have a boulder bounce, which I do not necessarily like. But if we put some army camps right there, we can eliminate this problem. But I'm so far not necessarily happy with how it's looking. I'm not quite happy with the trash ring so far. How do we want to fix this? That's an amazing question. How do we want to fix this? Hmm. Trash ring is not looking good so far. Most of the people just think, okay, trash buildings, you just place them anywhere as long as they are not inside of the base. But, for, but also for trash buildings, there's a lot of thinking process going inside of there. So you also can't really place your uh, your trash buildings how you like it. You still have to put some thought behind there. Maybe if we put it like this, then we can put another gold mine right here. Then we would have to switch up one of these collectors just to eliminate bowler bounces. We do the exact same thing on this side. One thing right here, one collector. But where do we want to get a building which we cannot bowler bounce? Maybe we can like switch this up with, an, with a dark elixir drill. But we still have the problem on this side. And how do you want to fix that? Maybe we can get like the laboratory. Put an elixir core collector right there. And then switch up this electric collector with a laboratory. I think that's okay. If that's okay I think. Now the brick problem is we still have a few trash buildings. We can put one right there. As well as one right there. That looks okay. Doesn't look too clean, but it looks okay. It, it's, it's going to do its job. It should be able to do its job. And now we place one more trash building right here. But also this, looking, this doesn't look too nice. Hmm. One second, let me take a look. What if you place like a army camp right here? That looks horrible. That looks horrendous. We need a gold mine right here. As well as a gold mine right here. I'm not too happy with how it's looking so far. It, lost, it doesn't look too good to be honest. Hmm. This trash ring is killing me. This trash ring is killing me. Help. <laughs> I'm probably not the best uh, person when it comes to trash rings. There's way, way better builders that are incredibly good with placing trash buildings. I am not one of them. I am for sure not one of them. I'll make a little cut. And then we'll get to uh, once I have an idea. So you don't have to wait for very, very long for me to think. Okay, I think I came up with a solution. I placed like the mortar one inwards on both sides so I have a little bit more space to work with right here and now we can easily place some buildings over there one laboratory right here we place the dark elixir drill right here one more army camp as well as another army camp right there we did the exact same thing on the opposite side and now I think I found a solution. Yes, I did. I did. I did find a solution. Perfect. Perfect. We place that one more inwards so we can place the workshop right here. And with that, we have the base basically finished without the traps. I will just place them where I think they make most sense. But you will always have to test how are your how the traps are really going to defend like you can't always predict okay what is the what are the enters going to be from like the enemies how are they going to attack my base you always have to see okay uh what is the biggest vulnerability of my base and then place your traps accordingly and that you can only do by attacking your own base or have it attacked by other people but first thing brain traps are of course relatively easy we just place them on the outside to either mess up funneling with super barbarians or we can use them to maybe catch some headhunters but i think just messing up funneling for super barbarians is what makes most sense on this base so we have three spring turbos right here 
three spring traps right there, two spring traps right here, and we'll place another spring trap on this wizard tower. Just to mess up funneling a little bit, if people were to like put a super barrier right here, then it instantly gets sprung away. Now the most important traps of course is always the NATO is very important as well as the Tesla. Tesla probably the most important trap out of all of them. And we want to protect our king. Our king is very vulnerable so we like put some Tesla in front of the king. Have a Tesla form right here. And also we want to mess up funneling a little bit so I think this looks quite okay-ish. Maybe we put like the other tesla as well on here wait we put it roughly right here so we have a little bit better chain value or well less chain value i think this looks okay this should look quite all right and with that we can also put some skeleton spells inside of the tesla farm without skeleton spells the tesla farm of course doesn't make too much sense and to be honest, let's just put every single skeleton spell out there. We can also put one to protect the monolith a little bit further. And I do think this looks okay when it comes to the skeleton spells. Or we place it right here. Or maybe a little bit more outwards. Maybe roughly right here. Just to mess up everything a little bit more. Or we place it inside. We place it maybe here. And then have... Mm, now they're relatively close together. I don't like when they are too clumped up. Of course they have to like be a little clumped up so you have so you can mess up everything a little bit. But I don't like it if like everything is so clumped up. Maybe like put it here. Hmm. Doesn't look too good so far. We can maybe put like one giant bomb right there and a skeleton spell right there. I think this looks quite okay-ish. This looks okay-ish. There's probably a better way of placing the skeleton traps, but I will have to see that once I test the base. I think this looks quite okay for the beginning. Or wait, I do have a better idea. Maybe what if I place a skeleton trap right here? And then place these Teslas a little bit more inwards. I think this is now okay. Now we still keep the Tesla right here. We have one skeleton spell right here just to protect the Warden as well as the Archer Queen a little bit more. And those skeleton traps are of course also extremely annoying. I think this looks okay. This looks okay so far. And now the red air bombs. Red air bombs you really have to watch out. You don't want them in the near air defense that's a mistake i often see very very often i see those you think like okay air defenses i need to protect those with my air bombs that's what air troops are going to target yes of course they will target it but the problem is if you have a lava hound flying towards the, one of the air defenses your air bomb is doomed useless so what i'd like to do is just to place them in the core and maybe help a little bit against any loons that are in the core or for example if someone uses a clone blimp clone clone blimp is something that is now very very common in the meta if you now send a loon blimp into the tunnel or a super minion blimp or any cloned loon blimp your air your air bombs might do some work they could do some work but we can of course also take a few of those and maybe place them next to the race tower. Just to maybe mess up some loons a little bit. Wait, I'll place those a little bit more inwards. Perfect. I think this is okay. I think this is okay if we now have one hound pathing towards the other air defense. They shouldn't, in theory, they shouldn't trigger the air bombs, which is good. If, the maybe, if it maybe goes down above the Inferno Tower, then of course, but that would be extremely unlucky. Now for the NATO. Where are we going to place our NATO? Wait, like, let's take a little look. We get rid of the Tesla. How am I going to attack this base if I were to attack it with any, with either Root Riders or with Air? With Root Riders, most likely, I would just go in from straight into the 6 o'clock uh, setup. 
and go through the Eagle Artillery and then towards the town with a overgrowth. I think that's the setup you would use for for root riders, but I don't necessarily see how you would put a NATO against that. So I think it's better to like put the NATO against a town or blimp. And I think it's most likely for the town of Blimp to come from the 12th, uh, or like from the right hand side. Wait, now I see we have to watch out with a giant arrow. So giant arrow from 12 o'clock is way too easy. If we place this two inwards, then it gets significantly harder, does it? Still, if you place it on, the, uh, on top of the elixir collector, you can still get one air defense, one sweeper, it will fly further and it will also funnel 6 o'clock. So that's a problem. What if we have it like this? Now it should, in theory, theory get a little harder, but you can still from 12 o'clock get the sweeper relatively easy, but not too easy. It's harder at least. It's harder at least and that's what's important, so we place one more... Elixir Collector right there. I think that's okay. And how is it from the right side? From the right side, of course, it's the same thing. But it does look harder. Of course, it's the exact same blimp. I mean, the exact same arrow. But on paper, it does look harder, but it will still fix it a little bit. So we have it like this. Again, we'll place one Elixir Collector in front of here. Maybe we'll move it a little bit further. And this now looks okay-ish. So blimps are going to come in from the right hand side. Then fly towards the town hall. And then we of course we would need the NATO somewhere right here. So if the blimp for example comes from the blacksmith. It will fly over, fly over, fly over. You would zap out the air sweeper. Opens up on top of the town hall. NATO pulls away all the loons. Red air bombs trigger. And those loons are gone and cannot get any value. In theory, that looks good. It looks very, very good in theory. Now for root riders. What are we going to do with our giant bombs? Giant bombs, of course, we want to place them against root riders. Or against, uh, what's, uh, what's it called? Super archer blimps. But super archer blimps are, of course, not the biggest threat root riders would be. As I already said, root waters are going to come in from the 6 o'clock side, so we want to have like a, a very, 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 very big bomb setup within the Eagle Artillery compartment. Something like this. Maybe one more giant bomb right here. Or right here, I think right there is okay. Or we where what would be the best spot for the last giant bomb? Maybe also right here. Just so we can maybe trigger the uh, the Warren ability right here. If all the giant bombs trigger, then the attacker would have to use the Warren ability. Can't delay it any further. That's exactly what you want. We will also place all the small bombs right there. Just to have like a little bit more damage and really, really hurt those root riders. You want to hurt those root riders. And I think this bomb setup will surely be able to do so. That's a lot of bombs. That's a lot of giant bombs. But I'm not quite happy with this giant bomb. How can we maybe place it somewhere where it makes a little bit more sense? What if we place that one inwards? This does look better to be honest. Yes, it does look better. In my opinion, this looks okay-ish. Now for the Seeking Air Mines. Seeking Air Mines, you have three things which you can do with it. You can counter a blimp, you can put them against dragons or electro dragons, and you can put them next to air defenses to uh, pop any lava hounds. On this base, what would most likely be best is just to place them inside of the core or next to key defenses just against dragons, I think. This base 
I would estimate it to have a slight vulnerability to drag to dragon, so that's exactly what we want to trap. Since I do think it's quite possible to snipe out one air sweeper with the giant arrow and then just spam dragons over the base. You would most likely just go in from the right side, put your queen here with the giant arrow, snipe out this air defense, then go in from the bottom side with, with your, like your dragons. So I'll just put some seeking air mines into the core. Just so your dragons will thin out a little bit. Now we have four left. And what are we going to do with these? Of course, this whole side will, uh, will then be cleared by heroes, so we don't need to put any traps right there. And your dragons will, of course, path to the monolith, to the eagle artillery, and around the left-hand side of the base. Maybe we can place, like, another uh, Seeking Airman right there. We can maybe place this one one outwards, and it will do, like, a double cast. If you maybe send in a blimp from this side, then two Seeking air mines could bring it down, as well as we, of course, have two Seeking air mines into the core of the base to go onto any dragons, which are going to maybe harm your base. Now we still have three left. Maybe we can put, like, two in front of the monolith. Because, well, maybe... It's quite common for people to like send in a Yeti blimp. The value on a Yeti blimp would be amazing. It looks great. You get a monolith, you get the Eagle Artillery, and you get the Sea Lure. So if people were to maybe charge this base or do anything that is not as quickly and is not as quick, these two seeking air mines could do some work. They could do some uh, work. Of course, it, on paper, it looks very easy. You funnel away or you like put two coco loons on the builder hut, two loons to trigger any traps and then you send in the blimps directly over towards the monolith. We place maybe one more seeking airman right here. Or we could maybe put two seeking airmans against a lalo attack. Uh, how would I attack this base with a lalo? That value, of course, does look quite alright right here. So that's maybe something you would zap out. Then maybe a your hero dive into the monolith compartment and your Lalo would go roughly... You will send in your Lalo from like this left hand side air defense. So if you maybe put two seeking air mines right there, you, the hound will actually pop before you use your warn ability. I think this looks quite an okay. And with that, we would have the base finished. With that, we have completely built a base from scratch, together with traps. With everything. And to be honest, it doesn't look that bad, of course. I will put the, uh, the base link in the description so you can try it out yourself, test it yourself. And of course, you will have a free base. But if you want your own personalized base that isn't seen by multiple thousands of people, then make sure to take a look at our website or on our Discord server where you can order your own personalized base from any of our really, really amazing builders. I really hope you learned something from this video. If you like this type of content, these base building guides and want to see more of them, then let us know down in the comments or with a like. With that, I would say see you guys soon with the next video. Until then, see ya and bye bye.